All right, so in July of 2010, Schlage started transitioning to this modular design right here. And this modular design allowed one cylinder to be used either as a key and knob or a key and lever cylinder, or a mortise cylinder, or a rim cylinder. So, in the case of mortise cylinders, for example, instead of carrying six individual mortise cylinder links and a variety of finishes and keyways and key sections and all that, I only need one cylinder. And then I can mix and match that with various front housings, rear housings, tailpieces, cams, all that to get what I need. So that means less cost, less overhead, less inventory. Basically, we're able to reduce the redundancy of typical inventory uh, across keyways and key sections. So another great thing about these is that the modular design allowed for field adjustments. So let's say our customer has a suite or an area of the building and they've currently got modular cylinders in there. And let's say they want to redesign or renovate the area and they're switching from bright brass to satin chrome door hardware. So with a modular design to accommodate this change, all we would need to do is remove this front housing, replace it with the appropriate finish they're wanting to go to, and then reinstall the cylinder. So we get to keep the existing cylinders, probably the existing keys and the keying on it. So that cuts down on costs for materials and labor, which is great. They still do sell their non modular cylinders and their components. I mean, obviously there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of these out there in the field. So it wouldn't make much sense for them just to outright discontinue them and abandon them, but uh, they didn't do that. So they've still got the non modular cylinders and their components for sale wherever you get your parts. So with the sales pitch out of the way, I will spend the rest of the time detailing the various components that make up the modular design. Start first with the cylinder. It's the same no matter if we've got a, a mortise cylinder or a rim cylinder, just the key and knob, key and lever itself. It's the same cylinder. Different from the existing Schlage cylinders, no matter the generation, in two areas. Number one, if you look at the Bible of the modular cylinder, which is here on the right, we've got a dimensional change. They've basically removed a portion of the metal at the rear of the Bible to accommodate the rear housing that it fits into. You can see that little lip right there. So that's one change. The other change is to the rear of the plug. We've got a notch cut out in the modular cylinder. And that notch interfaces with a groove on the cam. So the modular cylinders are backwards compatible. In other words, I can use this in an existing Schlage lock that predates the modular design as long as I've got the appropriate tailpiece. Same can't be said for these, obviously, because I can't get these to, to fit in there. See, they don't have that. That's about as far as I can get it. So. That's the difference between the two. On some of the older ones, and even this one right here, you can see I've got this green highlighter marked on the cylinder, and you'll even see it some on the older ones, the packaging had a green highlighter marked on the label. That designated uh, a modular cylinder. And they did that for a while, and we just got some in the other day, some new ones, and it appears that they don't have this mark on it anymore, so I guess they've abandoned that practice. But for a while, it was a good way to just look at a cylinder you had in the shelf or in the bin or whatever, and you saw it green, and you said, okay, that's module. Let me just grab that. That'll work. So that's the cylinder portion of the design. Let's talk about... Uh, the housings, you've got a front and you've got a rear, and obviously that's what the cylinder fits into. 
Front housing, which is this portion right here, it's the same no matter the cylinder type, either mortise or rim. And no matter the length of the overall mortise cylinder. So you got one of these, it'll work on all of them. The only difference is obviously are the finishes. And they make these in all of Schlage's available finishes. So maybe grab five of bright brass or five of the satin chrome or whatever's popular in your area. And you can use that uh, to swap finishes of cylinders real quick. The rear housing is a little bit more complicated. These come in six different lengths to create various lengths of mortise cylinders. So with these rear housings, we can make cylinders that are an inch and an eighth in length, inch and a quarter, inch and three eighths, inch and a half, inch and five eighths, and inch and three quarters. So six different cylinder lengths. They come in two colors. We've got gold, which is right here, or a goldish color. And then we've got silver. So here's how it works. Cylinders ending in an eighth of an inch, you know, inch and an eighth, inch and three eighths, inch and five eighths, will be gold in color. Anything that ends in an eighth is gold in color. Everything else, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, inch and three quarters, are silver. So there's a kind of a clue of what we'll finish this video up with in terms of identification without uh, a, a part number or a ruler or something like that. Off the bat, depending on the color of the rear housing, we can determine which of the three of the total six cylinder links we have. Now it's only one rear housing for the rim cylinders because obviously if we've got a thicker door, we just leave more of the tailpiece on and get bigger screws. So for rim cylinders, it's the same rear housing no matter what. The screws that hold these housings together are the same no matter the cylinder length. So these are Torx head screws. So I can use the same housing screw on this cylinder as I can for this obviously larger cylinder. The only difference is that the rear housing is recessed to accommodate them. So, only need one screw. The cams, cams are a little bit different story. There are two types of cams in terms of cylinder length size. We've got one cam for the gold rear housings, again, that's inch and an eighth, inch and three eighths, and inch and five eighths. And fortunately, those cams, the links are stamped on the back of them. Same for the other type, which is for inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and inch and three quarters. In side-by-side -side comparison, you can see the inch and an eighth ones, inch and three eighths, and inch and five eighths, they've got barely any metal on the front of the cam as opposed to the inch and a quarter, inch and a half, and inch and three quarters. We've got a, a substantial bit of metal. So, let's see, this is obviously an inch and an eighth cylinder, mortise cylinder, I can't, you know, that's not how it's supposed to look. When I put the appropriate cam on there, we're in business. They only have one screw hole for the most part which is again held in place by a, a Torx head screw. The one exception to that, they make two straight cams that have screw holes on both sides. So why do you think that is? Well, we invert the cam, which is often required for things like key switches we're able to secure it with this torque screw in the modular design. So Schlage kind of thought it through in terms of what you're likely to encounter in the field. So if you see one of the straight cams with two holes, that explains why there's two instead of just one, as you would typically see. Like for example, here's an L series and then here's another standard cam. 
Now the cam screws, which we kind of just showed a little bit of, again, are Torx head, same size, no matter the cylinder length of the mortise cylinder, one screw works for all of them. And if you want to know a little bit of neat piece of trivia, the reason why Schlage went to, for the housing screws and the cam screws, why they went to that Torx design, well, when they were designing these cylinders, they reached out to a lot of Schlage dealers and end users and asked for feedback specifically related to the servicing of the cylinders. And overwhelmingly, they got a lot of feedback saying, we don't like Phillips head screws that hold in the cams and, and various other components because they strip and they're a pain to get out. So with Torx, you kind of not outright eliminate that risk, but uh, you definitely reduce it. So that's why they went with this design. One other component on the larger mortise cylinders is the plug extension kit. These come in two lengths, a small or a short, and a long version. This one's the short version. Short versions for inch and three eighths and an inch and a half mortise cylinders. The longer version, which is basically this portion doubled, so add that on to this right here. The long version is for inch and a five eighths and inch and three quarter cylinders. If you've never worked on these before, if you encounter them in the field, I promise you that you can tell the difference between the two just by looking at them. Uh, you know, obviously this is the shorter one and the larger one's almost double in size in terms of this area right here. So if you're looking at it for the first time, you can tell right off the bat if you've watched this video, which one's short and which one's long. All these components are available to be ordered through Schlage or whoever you get your parts and materials from. So if you want to stock up, for example, on your housing screws or your cams or your rear housings, front housings, whatever it is, you can get them. So with all that said, we can use some of these clues or some of the information that I've discussed to determine the length of the cylinder without a ruler or a part number handy. For example, as I said earlier, they come in two colors. So we've got six total mortise cylinder links in two colors. So if we see silver or gold, we immediately can reduce that number to three. Three links are silver, three are gold. So let's use this one for example. We've got gold. So we know it's either gonna be inch and an eighth, inch and three eighths, or inch and five eighths. We can then use the plug extension kit or lack thereof to determine which of those three the cylinder is. Inch and an eighth cylinders or inch and a quarter cylinders, the smallest of the two in terms of silver or gold, won't have any plug extension kits on them. So here, for example, this is an inch and an eighth. We can see the plug beyond the rear housing. So we don't need any plug extension kit to make that work. The short plug extension kit is only for inch and three eighths and inch and a half. Obviously we've got a gold, so we know it's an inch and three eighths because it can't be an inch and a half. We've got a short extension kit and it's gold. So that narrows it down to inch and three eighths. Long extension kit would be obviously inch and five eighths. And then for silver, it would be that inch and a half, or I'm sorry, inch and three quarters. So identifying this one, for example, okay, let's try to put our cam on here. No, it's not it. Or actually it is, I'm sorry. Yeah, so this is obviously an inch and a quarter. I was just using the wrong cam. 
So that's how you can tell the difference without a product number or a ruler or something like that in front of you. You just have to notice the clues of the various components. And then, as I kind of touched on earlier, rim housings have their own rear housing, or I'm sorry, rim cylinders have their own rear housings. And if you look at the back, you can see why. I can only remove metal for a set screw channel or the mounting screw holes. Can't have both because I'll start cutting in one or the other. So that's why those two aren't interchangeable. But other than that, that's pretty much all there is to modular cylinders. I'm going to include some links to the service manual for these, which has part numbers and, and more information that I covered, a little bit uh, more of the nuanced details. But thank you for watching.